The first order of business is a reorganization of the Village Board of Trustees. Um, so I'd entertain a motion for uh, the chair. I nominate Jeff Kahn for chair of this year of the trustees. Uh, second, uh, Carrie, um, any, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll be your chair again for another year. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and then now for vice chair, um, and uh, I, would, I would move that Carrie Agan be nominated for vice chair. I'll second that. Any other, any, any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries, okay. Uh, now we have to name the newspapers of record. Uh, I would move that they be the same, which would be the Valley News. Uh, I believe, the, well, the Vermont Standard first and foremost, always. Boy. And then the Valley News and, uh, <laughs> do we use the Rutland Herald bill? I think I think those I think the, the, those are two. Carrie, do you remember? I think it's just the two. <laughs> and the Boston Globe. Now the New York Times. So um, we will retain those two newspapers as the newspapers of record: the uh, the Vermont Standard and the Valley News. Um, now we're on to uh, municipal appointments. Uh, so for the planning commission, uh, now at the, I see that Susan Boston is listed here. Um, is, is Susan present? I don't think so. Um, I don't know where this stands, Bill. Has she has she already been uh, interviewed? And no, not that, that, that okay. Not that I'm aware so of. this is just someone who is interested in the position. I see. Yeah, I believe so. So Susan Boston is interested in serving on the planning commission. Uh, the Development Review Board, um, Carrie Cole, will continue until a new member is chosen. I'm she continuing. You're continuing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Carrie. Um, and Design Review Board, I believe they, those interviews are occurring tomorrow, and I think there are four applicants for two positions. So it's wonderful that people are stepping up to apply to these boards. Um, and uh, the design review board, uh, there are two vacancies and, oh, that's the one that four people have applied for, the design review board. Uh, yeah, and so that's it. Uh, we don't have to approve anyone tonight, but that's just what's pending. Permits, we have a permit before us uh, for use of the sidewalk by Dr. Coburn's tonic. Basically, they would, uh, they want to place a very small sort of high boy round tables outside on the sidewalk on the inner seam. The f there's basically two halves to the sidewalk uh, surrounding uh, that building. They want to occupy the inner half uh, with tables on both the Elm Street side and the Central Street side um, for outdoor dining purpose. And um, I'd uh, entertain a motion concerning that permit which we've, uh, we've received. Yeah, of course. I'll make a motion. Okay, moved by Carrie, seconded by Anna, and uh, discussion uh, regarding that permit. Um, that one thing I would like to have is that uh, that permit is uh, available un until this emergency period is over. Uh, we're not giving them a permit to be on the sidewalk permanently, in my opinion. But uh, there being no alcohol use either. I, what, they have to follow all the they legal. Have to be roped off. They plan to sec, to uh, to so rope it off. Going they're going to. How can they have space to do that? They're doing it very tightly, keeping to one half of the sidewalk. How many tables? I don't know exactly how many tables. The permit didn't show exactly how many tables, does it, Bill? It does not. It doesn't show how. Here to speak it, it, it doesn't. But the the uh, tables must be. 10 feet apart, I believe, um, for, for safety reasons. So I would only entertain doing this if um, a, pending the, uh, that all health uh, 
requirements are met that are currently in place in the state, uh, first of all. And secondly, that I, I would say that uh, we're giving them this permission, if we do, until, say, October 15th. And there would also be, we can understand there's no smoking, correct? There's no smoking. I would do. Let's put that in there. Let's put that in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe. Well, Jeff, just to support what you're talking about, I, I think, at least I remember, the governor speaking and mentioning that he was hopeful that local municipalities would not be, not be restricted in allowing restaurants to take advantage of any outdoor dining possibilities that, that they can come up with. But he, I think he said, until the end of his executive order. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's, and it's happening all around the state. Yeah. Uh, the outdoor, uh, the expansion of outdoor seating at restaurants. And it's so hard for um, the rest, our restaurant businesses, we want them to survive. Uh, so I'm very much in favor of this, so long as uh, uh, the health, uh, that the, our health officer oversees uh, the placement of the tables. And there's also a healthy amount of room to walk around on the corner. Yes, so long as they don't occupy more than one half of the sidewalk, which is what they're, they, 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 they say in their permit. And would that make it ADA compliant? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe it does. I, think, I believe the sidewalk is, is wide enough. Uh, in that section of the village for a wheelchair to get by on one half of that sidewalk. Right, they have, uh, it's almost two of the blocks. Wide. Yeah. Kareem? Yes, um, I know you, you mentioned the date of October 15. Um, it's hard for us to get a hold around that time anyway, but um, would it help to say, uh, generally speaking, if, if restaurants want that, to say that until they're allowed to go back to 100% Well, I, I, you know, I don't want to pick the, put that restriction on it. I don't know when that's going to happen. I think we should grant the permit to allow, allow that this summer, basically. Um, and I don't know if a blanket statement is appropriate. And we don't know when the 100% will be allowed or whatever. They're looking for that permit now. So I don't want to revoke it uh, as soon as uh, the governor says, uh, uh, if this turns out to be successful and, and not a problem. Yes. No, no music was applied for. Um, no, they would have to apply uh, for another permit for any music. There's no music uh, component to the to the permit request. We, there, was no, there was no request for a liquor license attached to the permit, so um, I, I could, only if it's legal. I, I don't. I, I don't have the answer to your question. Uh, it needs to be roped off. Um, it, it, I know that it has to be roped off if liquor is permitted. So if they're going to have the liquor, and I was told by Bob Crow, the manager there, that it would have a rope, roping off. Um, so if it's legal, I suppose they could do it with, yeah, mm -hmm. any other questions regarding uh, discussion, uh, this discussion period uh, regarding uh, the Coburn's request for outdoor seating? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. All those in favor of the permit? with the restrictions of uh, uh, ending October 15th and that they not occupy more than one half of the sidewalk um, and they follow all health rules as, as our, our health officer um, will enforce. Um, with those provisions, um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, motion, and, and motion carries, it's unanimous. Um, okay. Let's move on. Other business.
before us today that someone would like to bring up? Yes, Isabel. You know what? Can uh, give her a microphone? Can, can, yes, let's give her a mic. Thank you. Hi, my name is Isabel Chiquan. I'm a village resident, and I'm speaking tonight as co-president with Ray Bourgeois of the Board of Directors of the Woodstock Area Chamber of Commerce. Our board has been meeting weekly um, since the beginning of the pandemic. And at this morning's meeting, we decided to bring to the attention of the village trustees three points that would make a difference to our businesses. And we've prepared a motion that you are now reading and that I will read aloud for the rest of the audience. The board of directors of the Woodstock Area Chamber of Commerce is alarmed by the circumstance that restaurants who have no other choice than to conduct their limited operations part partially outdoors have been asked to pay a permit fee for outdoor dining by the village. The board of directors is further concerned that the current zoning regulations dictated by a legitimate concern for the historic design of our village is under the current dire circumstances, a hindrance for retail businesses to develop their sales. In addition, the chamber is alerted that the parking meter enforcement in an economic environment that it's still that is still extremely distressed has led to several tickets issued to customers. The chamber would like to point out that currently there is no shortage of parking space in town and therefore no reason to encourage shoppers to not stay parked over a certain time. The issuance of tickets reflects negatively on the town and puts our businesses in a difficult situation vis-a-vis -vis their customers. On behalf of the Woodstock Area Chamber of Commerce, we, the Board of Directors, therefore petition the Village Board of Trustees to, first off, waive all permitting fees to the business community for outdoor operations through October 31 of 2020. Second, pose zoning regulations related to temporary portable outdoor signage and displays of a size the trustees will find appropriate through October 31, 2020. And finally, extend the moratorium on parking meetings through July 31, 2020, and re-evaluate at that time. Um, I can shed some light on our reasoning with regard to timing. Um, the October 31 um, temporary uh, uh, waiving of permit fee for um, outdoor operations we hope and understand that probably we hope that we will all get back to normal business and have a very busy um, activity in October, but we need to allow our restaurants to recoup their losses. And so adding outdoor dining to 100% indoor capacity would help offset the losses that they're having now. And um, it's the same reasoning for the um, outdoor display of temporary signage and um, other displays that I can get into if you would like. And as for parking meters, the thinking is that um, July will still be probably slow because lodging is not allowed to reopen and probably will not be allowed to reopen fully in July. Um, but hopefully in August we'll be seeing a lot of visitors from out of state and out of town, and then that would warrant putting the parking, parking meters um, back in operation. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, yes. No comments. I'd like to speak to this if you don't mind. Um, I actually agree with it as a whole. I'm a business owner. It does. I know how hard it is, especially with some elderly clientele and stuff like that, for those parking spaces to just be taken up. I'm a store owner. I need people to be able to get there, get in. I do completely, though, have to understand I can't be selfish in this. I agree that, and it's, I've heard it from many people, that why are we charging for the meters right now if we're not, the reason for them is turnover. We have very little of it. Um, I think to limit anybody or to charge them a fee during this time, 
of desperation is just not a necessary thing. Um, thank you for what you guys have written up. It's great that you've spoken up and and brought it to the attention. It, it, to me, it's it's cut and dry. I'm curious about the outdoor dining. Um, yes. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? How about this? No? Um, I know there's been some discussion, and I haven't attended any meetings or, or been a part of any meetings with the Economic Development Commission about outdoor dining. Is that, um, I'm wondering how this plays into that. Is there any overlap? No, the, the EDC has proposed that um, they would fund picnic tables to be set in specific areas throughout town, such as the green and the former pie place so that people could bring their takeout and enjoy it there. Right, and um, that's all that's happening. Yes, so that's a different topic. Okay. Um, and this one is specifically for those restaurants that exist and that have no other choice than to have outdoor dining on their sidewalk, such as Colburn that you just authorized. Um, they are, once their permit is approved, they receive a bill not very big, but right. to them it feels like adding insult to injury, which they literally are injured right now, and um, we just we just think it's, it's just not right to ask them to pay a permit. Okay. Um, Joe? Yeah, I, I can speak to the EDC. Uh, well, actually, we did. Our executive director wrote to, Del, to I believe, Del Fick, to the EDC, because our initial idea was Let's have, we understand the town needs money. Let's have the EDC pay for those permit fees. So that was our ask. And the answer came, what you just mentioned. Right. The governor has said that the communities need to lift all restrictions and difficulties um, that businesses are encountering. The governor said, I, I don't, I would, I would hope that local municipalities wouldn't be overly restricted right. when it came to restaurants designed to do outside that. Okay, so that's, that's the response that we got from the EDC. And then we went to the town, and I think, I don't know where that fell, but we haven't had a response. So we decided it was a perfect opportunity since you had this meeting tonight to bring it to you. Thank so, you. Yeah, but uh, with regards to the outside, outside dining, what the EDC discussed yes. were the three options regarding outside dining. One was providing picnic tables at various locations. Uh, I think another one is to put up the barriers as they have in Hanover. And there was another one. And I don't think it's been decided upon yet because I think we're, we were probably in a position to pay for the extra tables. And I think that $1,200 a piece or something like that. You're talking um, about the I know that there was an idea floated to take over the parking spaces and put tables. I don't know where that idea is, and that's not what we're talking yeah. about. But it hasn't been, I, I don't think we came to a, a positive, a definitive decision yet okay. as to which way the DUC was supposed Yeah. I think it's coming up the next year. Okay, but the In terms of where to place tables and uh, or use the barriers that, as they do in in Hanover. By taking over the park, some yeah. of the parking spots. Yeah. Yes. Well, those okay. So those are not not features you bring in front of us tonight. No. Okay. Right. And, and and we don't know what the EDC is going to do yet. Uh, we we're, looks like they're going to do something to help outdoor dining. I, I want to comment on, on some of what you've had to say as well. Um, I, I like the first thing that you have down there, although in, in both cases I, was, I would change it to October 15th. As in, in general, uh, that, that's pretty much, nobody's going to be sitting outside in the weather after that anyway. Uh, and we just voted. We just want to make sure that we include um, Columbus Day weekend or... That's included uh, always uh, if, you, if you go to the 15th. Um, the, uh, and then as far as waiving on permitting fees, I would be in favor of that. Uh, pause the zoning regulations uh, related to temporary outdoor signage. We've actually uh, kind of been allowing that uh, already. If you've noticed the sign that's been in front of uh, uh, 
in downtown in front of the Mountain Creamery uh, that's been out off the sidewalk and a little bit in the street. Nobody's reported that uh, to zoning and to enforce taking that away. Uh, you know, look, that can't be willy nilly. I notice you say in your uh, appropriate signs. Uh, I think that that's important. You don't want to trash up the town. Uh, it really has to come before uh, maybe design review uh, uh, as well as us to, to have that signage. Um, I'm not against it. I just think it should be reviewed. As far as the last one goes, the parking lot meters. You have to understand a couple of things. We've extended, first it was April, then we extended it through May. Uh, my experience uh, also, uh, as a business owner on the street, um, is that those people visiting Woodstock have no problem whatsoever with it. And if they get a ticket, they don't have to pay it, as you know, because you're allowed twice a year. And for someone who's visiting, that pretty much covers them. And they've been very happy to bring them in. We've we've signed a number of them for them. Um, the I believe that we saw the possibility, and we do see the possibility that there will be an increase in traffic, especially when the, um, the inns and the, all the lodgings um, uh, start to take in customers, which they're going to the middle of this month. Um, well, the middle of this month, I know the Woodstock Inn is opening. No, I think they're July 1. Well, they've changed it to July 1? Okay, well, it's happening July 1. I, 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 previously, it was June 16th, um, but it's happening July 1. Um, so, you know, I think that we need to see, uh, rather than declare it in advance, we may have plenty of need for that, for that parking. And uh, so that's the one that I would say let's hold off on um, out of the three that you've put there. Um, that's that's how that's how I see it. it the, one of the things that's happening, and Anna's on a committee that's giving a report in August, is we may be changing uh, the parking in Woodstock and going to a different system. We we want to we we also want in the process of doing that to not have that be a burden on the taxpayers and uh, and the monies that we do collect although the purpose as carrie correctly said uh, originally for doing this was turnover but the the fact is that meters do also make money and all of that money is going into a fund which will fund the possibility of e the, uh, the probability of either new meters that will function better or key a combination of kiosks with far fewer parking meters um, uh, so that report's coming in August, and all of the income from those meters is helping towards that goal. Just to point that out to folks. So I, I'd be happy to approve the first two out of the three, what you're presenting tonight, but I would object to the third for the reasons I said. Would you consider extending it to the end of June? Because it is very small. I would consider it if the hotels aren't opening, yes. I would, ent I would, I would uh, entertain that, absolutely, to the end of June. Uh, in anticipation of some of the comments that I think are coming, um, I have a question for the chief. Do you know if what the net um, gain is on the meters? So is is there one for between paying the meter maids and and the revenues that we're having? Is there is is there anything coming out of this, or is it a loss potentially? Right now. Yes. Well, I mean, do you have any idea? I really don't know. I can't say. Yeah. Okay. Did you look at last year? $25,000 was about all the last year. That's what I'm concerned about, is that we're losing yeah. money. And we're losing money. We're not losing money. We actually gained money yeah. even when during the moratorium. Uh, yeah. So, it's it. Yeah, yeah, Joe. All right. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to disagree. I mean, we're, the word, the, the visit account, I think we can all agree, is extremely low right now. And unless everything opens up 100%, I don't think we're going to, I, I'm quite certain that we're not going to see the visit, visit account that we had. We're not going to enjoy the numbers we had last year. There's no way. And I'm sure that people are pleased to come to this town, but I don't know anybody is pleased about getting a ticket. No, the so, 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 I mean, hey. I, 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 
if we had these, the media maids walking around and essentially not doing a whole lot because there aren't many cars. I, I went to work this afternoon at 1 o'clock. There were six cars in the green. So I, I don't have a problem with giving somebody a job, but we're, we're, not, we're paying them really not to do a whole lot right now because there, there just aren't that many cars there in the first place. In the second place, why should we displease what limited people we are getting in now? Well, and to me, I, I question the wisdom in that decision. Joe, why don't we, why don't we uh, take... We have a, a vote of the whole board. Well, we're not voting yet. Yeah, okay. Joe, the whole board does vote on everything. Okay. Okay? Why don't we consider, uh, you know, taking a, a, the moratorium for the rest of the month, if we can do that, Chief, uh, if, if you're able to do that with your employees, uh, for the rest of the month, and then in July, at our trustees' meeting, see how see how the traffic is picked up, and make a decision then. That's a, that's a, that's a good option, I would say. And then, then we could actually be basing it more on fact than conjecture. Yes. And, uh, I would agree with that. Yes, Joe. Question. Uh, I had an answer for Anna. The income from the parking meters is about is twenty five thousand according to your budget. No, I, I I saw that on this budget. I'm wondering just for this time if we have that was my question for the chief. Thank you. So I have a follow up question yes. on point two. Um, when you mentioned that businesses would have to go before the design review board, um, I I see the logic and, and the the board of trustees of the chamber agrees with that. I'm mean, just a little concerned on timing. Um, we can't wait another month. So how would that work? Design review meets how often? Don't they meet twice a month? They meet on the first and the first and third Wednesdays. Design review. I, I have to say though, I being somebody that came here as a complete new person, opened up a business and tried to get my business off the ground. I was appalled by how there's grandfather laws that exist where businesses that have been around for 200 years can stick their signs out and don't need to alert people to where they are, but new businesses are shunned from doing it. And I am more than happy to let those businesses, especially during a difficult time, do whatever they have to do, basically to get people to notice them to come there. Well, there's, yeah, but let's have a, a, a review of what they're putting out. Care, care, because we don't do things in this town just willy-nilly. Uh, if they meet twice a month, I don't think it would prevent any restaurant who wants to put signs out from coming to the next meeting. And at least, at least having a review of this is what the size we want to do, and this is where we want to put it. Does Gillingham's have to put in a permit when they put out a sign on their, on their front? All businesses, regardless of whether you're brand new or not, have the ability to put one display in front of their business on the current rules. David, can I ask you a question? Sure. Are you going to meeting with these business owners as they're putting out their seating? I mean, I know that a lot of them come to you and you go and approve some of the stuff. Is this, is this common? No? Yeah. I haven't had to go look at anybody's yet. We've done it over the phone okay. um, and by emails. Okay. And do you feel good about that process? So far, yep. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if it makes sense for, you know, I understand your your need for speed in terms of the permitting and people being able to do this and, and not necessarily having us look at every single request um, that's cumbersome. Uh, if David is overseeing this process and it's just for this period of time, we only meet once a month and, you know, I know it's twice a month with the DRB, but I, I would be comfortable with allowing David to, to make any, uh, any comments on, you know, inappropriate signage or outdoor seating and, and, and approvals? Well, I don't think David's the right person for that. He's our health officer and our fire chief. If anything, Chief Blish. Uh, He's our health, health inspector. No, we're talking about small signs, signs uh, placed outdoors. Isn't that zoning, though? That That's zoning. zoning. That is zoning. And for temporary permits, um, we do have some power there. But it, I don't think it falls under his purview. In terms of zoning, 
for signage. I know that Neil has already been in conversation with some urban planners who are, who are suggesting things like uh, adopting four or however many signs for the different kinds of businesses that we have. So they're color coded, they're of our uniform size, and that visitors to town can look at them at a glance and say, here's a curbside take out only restaurant, here's a restaurant with outdoor seating, here's a business that's open for in person shopping. So I know that Neil is already looking at some of these things, and perhaps the thing to do would be to approve some sort of expedited, very simplified process for signage until this October 15th date. Yeah, we could get together with Neil like this coming week, in fact, and ask him to handle it because that's the only office is open and people could go, go right there and perhaps get approved so once he comes up. That's the kind of thing that needs to go before the new year. Because, uh, right, well, uh, yeah, it's just that somebody has to look at it. So, yeah, you're offering a good suggestion, Kerry, that uh, because planning is only is open five days a week, let them come there. And let Neil figure out something that uh, will allow it to be somewhat uniform, and let him give that uh, okay. Because we don't need often enough to be the appropriate board for that as well. And do you do you guys already have in mind sort of the types of like have you guys discussed like it would be great if we could all have sandwich board signs that are this tall? Or so we haven't discussed specifics. We're 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 trusting the trustees to you know tell us, and I think that solution is perfect. I also want to point out that maybe we weren't clear enough, but we're thinking signage and some display of some merchandise. And again, we understand that it doesn't look sort of like a wrap of clothes or for sale, for example. Something to lure the customer in. And again, we know it's not the look that we want for Woodstock in the long term, but the, the idea is to bring customers from the outside inside and make up some of the sales. Maybe the bookshop wants to have used books outside. I'm just saying an example that we're not part of the conversation, but just an example. Uh, just like not a, not as big as a sidewalk sale, definitely not. But a little bit of merchandise outside to again entice the customer to come in and make purchases, which is proven effective in other towns. Bookshop doesn't do it, but just for this time, just to help business pick up and make up some of the losses. Well, perhaps that, that part could be those businesses that feel they need that for their business. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we already have that system in place where people come and ask us or earn us to do particular, particular businesses, but I don't think we should do it as a general. Anyone can just put so, merchandise on the sidewalk. Uh, so in other words, we can go back to our businesses and tell them you can display racks and you can, you can have a permit to have your little display of racks or whatever it is. No, um, they need to come and apply for a permit. Yes, they can go apply for a permit. How quickly would it be uh, looked on to? It wouldn't be until next month. Well, so that's the problem. So maybe what Carrie is saying is that, you know, there needs to be like a format. So if we approve, if you come up with what you're looking for, like one rack, one sandwich board, that this is what we want, and then you can go to Neil and say, can we put that out? And, you, and he says yes or no, and then that's it. Because I have heard from so many people how vibrant Hanover looks. Yeah. And they've adopted many of these things, and I think when you go through a town and they're right. tapping on they the sandwich board, they need something where they're not waiting for a, a yeah. meeting, and they can just put it out. Right. Yeah. Can't, can't, right. can't the board just decide that like a two by three foot sandwich board yeah. temporarily starting as soon as they can put some logo on it? something they can put up if it's done professionally or you know but do we have that information right now but, but the problem is you know we're trying to get these stores up and running so just saying you know every store can put a two by three foot sandwich board out if it's done tastefully and put this otherwise we're waiting until there's another mm -hmm. meeting another yeah. meeting and then no meeting. Well, what about the idea we have of them going to plan you know you're still waiting. Waiting. you're still you're still okay but i mean that's monday Monday. Yeah. How long is it going to take for them to get the permission? Well, we'd have to speak to Neil, but we would we could urge him to uh, prove reasonable signs really? that, and ask him to make them uniform, uh, make suggestion. It's just that but, but those there has to be some process. But those signs have to be called and be made professionally. And that's going to be expensive. It's going to be another cost. It's going to be time. And you know what? Let's just 
Should we no, let's make an exception room. Right. That's a great idea. If we all said everybody can have a two by three sandwich board, they're easily done. It would be uniform. And and then, that, that, if you want to do that, two by three, if you want to claim that, uh, or claim that. We, right, up to a certain, like, yeah, yeah, to a limit of an up to Be sure you have an expiration date. Yeah. Yeah. Be sure you have an expiration date. So our right. request is October 31. We could have uh, 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 aligned it to October 15. 15. That's fine. So what is, the, what is the motion reads like this? That we will waive all permitting fees to the business community for outdoor operations through October 15, 2020. Pause zoning regulations related to temporary portable outdoor signage and displays of size uh, uh, up to two by three. Um, again, appropriate through October 15. But here's one question uh, uh, before I continue. Um, how about where to place? Well, what is Jeff? Well, in such a manner that place in such a manner that do not interfere with vehicular or pedestrian traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, okay, how's that? Yeah. All right. Well, can and you include it so it's more specific, just like you did with Coburn's, where it's, it has to be on against the, the wall and half, it has to be up against the, yeah, that's the wall, or it has to be that half of the sidewalk? No, the Coburn's is seating. This is totally different. I know, but I'm thinking. But it, 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 so that it's not just like, oh, I don't but, think it's But they could put it in between parking meters, which will be less, have less interference with the public than it would be against the building. In between parking meters in the street? No, no, no. on the side. On the sidewalk, sidewalk, in between parking meters. That would work. Yeah. That doesn't obstruct people trying no, to get out it's just on the outside. Yeah. So the noise is in between them so that people can get out of their cars okay. without knocking them over or opening their doors. That could, that could, yeah, that's one, that's one thing. thing. Um, I think you have to be able to open the door. You have to be able to open the door. Yeah, so how about close to, but next to, the parking meters? Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Chief, Chief, is there a way you could think that that could work? Well, you have to use the meters for the In terms of safety. Uh, for, the, for those sandwich boards? Yes. I think it'd probably be on a case by case basis depending on yeah. where exactly they're placed. Well, I, I think it could probably be it could be done. If you just can't interfere with people hand on the door of the car without hitting it. All right, no, it can't interfere with people walking in the sidewalk. Right. 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 Well, if you put it either towards the front or the back of where the meter is placed, there's a front end of the car and the back end of the car that's so not gonna hit. The door's not gonna be I mean, unless somebody drives up on a sidewalk, they'll be able to open the door. All right, so placed in such a manner near the meters that uh, it does not interfere with the cars, doors opening, or pedestrian passing by. All right, and then... Th the, sorry, but probably we should be more specific. It would be displays of merchandise. I, I'm not going to add displays of merchandise just so freely. I think that is a huge mistake. Yeah, just, so. just, just say displays of merchandise. Um, so you don't want it to happen, or you don't want to put it in? Right now, right now, actually, they, they're, you can. A lot of businesses simply don't do it. They can have one item, like a mannequin outside, or, or a, a particular piece of something they sell. They're allowed to do that now, so long as they don't block the passageways. Maybe they're not aware of that. Uh, some of the businesses do that now, and they're allowed, so I wouldn't want to open it up further than that. Uh, maybe some businesses just don't realize they can do one display now. Um, and, and planning and zoning can, the rules are in there, but it's, it's allowed. Alright, so we'll bring it back to them. Yeah, bring that back to them. And then uh, let's, let's talk about extending the moratorium on parking meters through, uh, through June and until the next trustees meeting. Yes. In July, at which point we will review that moratorium. Yes. Great. Well, wait, wait, there's a, there's a motion uh, on the board. A second? No, second. Second? Okay, now we can discuss that. Um, Jeffrey, I just wanted to, um, in, in light of the conversation around when the Woodstock and was opening and set up, just provide some factual information to the board in case the board does not know. The, uh, the governor has authorized out-of-state visitors uh, starting June 15 if they uh, meet some fairly draconian conditions. Yeah. 
and those are uh, self-quarantining for 14 days in their own state, or uh, seven days plus a negative test, unless you come from what's considered right now a safe county, uh, around that's pretty much very empty counties, okay? And they need to register with a system called SARA Alert, uh, which is driven by the Vermont Department of Health. Um, and of course, they need to sign a certificate when they arrive at the various lodging properties saying that they comply with all this and that they don't display any, that's logical, any COVID symptoms. So the reason why I'm making that point is that it's not because, um, you know, we open up as lodging properties. That means that people will come. It's really going to depend on under which conditions they're allowed to come. Because we've had calls from potential guests, and where I, when I went through the list of the things they need to do, they said, we understand that this is way too much for us to worry about to spend a couple of nights in Woodstock. Um, do you know when this is going to be lifted? And the answer is unfortunately no. So I just wanted to, to give some information to the board to show some of the challenges that we may be facing in the next, hopefully not a few months, but definitely next three to five to six weeks. Thank you, Karim. Yeah, we're aware of that. I just want to clarify, clarification. Is, the, is it pocket meeting? Pocket meeting is more auditorium for the next trustees meeting or the end of June? Till the next trustees meeting. So we can see at the beginning of July how things. So until the second Tuesday of July. And, and what? Just so I'm clear, what what kind of data are you going to be looking for? Look visual. Okay, so you're waiting to see yeah, if there, how the traffic picks up. How does pick up? Yes. Okay. Effective when, Jeff? Uh, how quickly can we make that effective? Well, I'll have to notify um, Harold and Tim. Terry was tentatively coming back on the 17th. So right now I have Harold and Tim, who just came back to work, and I'll have to tell them, don't come back to work. But it depends on the date that, I mean, Tomorrow is Saturday, so probably Monday I could notify. Okay, so we can make this effective as of Monday. Yeah, actually, no, tomorrow is Wednesday after. Yeah, so it would be, it would, I would give me an opportunity to finish out this week, and then probably Monday would be okay. a fair, effective date for the employee. Okay. Okay. Can they go patrol around and not get tickets this week? Well, just, can't they just yeah. patrol, can't they just patrol around and just tell people, oh, you don't have to feed the meter? Yeah, they could do that. That'd be yeah, great. I think they would that would be nice. That. They could be our ambassadors for the next month. Yeah, I think they would appreciate that. Okay. Any other comments? <laughs> I made a comments. Uh, um, if not, I, then let's take a vote. All those in favor of the motion as presented uh, with the as, as I have stated. Aye. 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 Hi. Right. The motion carries. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay. Is there any other business? Oh, yes. Well, I have a question because it looks like um, the police department um, they they're going to be locked in the basement. Yeah. Um, and the police department because they're the only people at budge on their budget. Well, it wasn't, so it, was a, it, it wasn't quite the way you were saying. It wasn't okay. like the only people who watched. We looked look at things, and um, it, it seemed like that was, those were some realistic changes we could make. And, and some of that money will have to come back. It was just we could put it off for now. We thought this year, more than other years, we wanted to keep the tax rate down in Wisconsin. Everybody wanted to go forward with the trees, and I, I certainly don't see a problem with that. That means your money, your tax money, will go up a little bit, not that much though. But by bringing the rest of it down, it makes something like that more more possible, and still having us have a low tax rate this year. Uh, now we will be having to buy police cruisers in the future. The trees. I'm just you know trying to say, you know, it's hard. I see this happen at meetings, and I'm just wondering. It was looked at before, before the meeting. The, the cuts in the, in the police budget were gone over before this meeting occurred. We're not screening this on uh, Chief Bush. All right. I just think he's a good guy. And we think he's a good guy, too. <laughs> we, we, think, <laughs> we think he's a good guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great job. So, yeah. Yeah. We, we agree with you. All right. Okay. Just, unless I'm not reading this right, I think 
the the um, the budget um, has actually increased compared to the actual, but not as much as we thought it would increase, right? It decreased compared to the budget that was set. Yeah, the, but not compared to the last year's actual. No. So there was actually an increase, but it's not as high an increase as we thought it would be. Correct. Okay. That's so, correct. So that kind of balances things in that way. Anything, uh, any other uh, new business to come before us? Yes. Um, hi, Doug Rand. Um So um, we have, uh, have, they are posted on River Street on each end, as there has been since I could walk. Um, uh, no through truck signs. And thankfully, they, unfortunately, when the Rec Center Bridge, what we call the Rec Center Bridge, was rebuilt, there was a lot of signage that was removed and not all of it got replaced. Um, we've recently had some, um, thanks to Chief Lish, uh, some no through truck signs have been, re um, have been put back up. Um, however, I think without an ordinance, it's not something that, am I correct, Chief, that without an ordinance, you can't write a ticket? Right, it'd be educational, and I think we talked about drafting that ordinance, so that's something, I'll take care of that. Right. Okay. Is that all? Okay. We've already we discussed this. And we, we, we know about that. We, we, uh, we approved uh, and asked the chief to put in a speed control uh, thing because other, other residents had asked for it. Yeah. And we've done all that. And okay. uh, we're just waiting to, to right. make it more difficult for trucks to come through reverse. Yeah. Those signs have definitely helped. But we just want to make it. We want to. It needs to be enforced. We're working. I didn't realize there was progress there. Yes. Thank you. Yep. yep. Anything else to come before the trustees tonight? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, no. Make no. the motion. Make motion. Oh, yeah, I make a motion. <laughs> Sorry, I'm new. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Welcome, Seton. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, adjourned. Thank you all very much.